recording. Okay. Well, I guess my goal today is to um, show you how to solve systems of equations using graphing calculators and using GeoGebra. Okay. <clears throat> because ultimately, we've been talking about this quite a bit. Is is uh, our goal with using matrix multiplication, matrix inverse inverses, and all that good stuff, is to develop an algorithm that a computer could easily understand and do the calculations very quickly for us. Okay, so we can move away from doing routine calculations all the time, letting the computer do the calculations all the time, and then using our our minds to make uh, decisions and uh, some analysis of a situation rather than just busy work. Okay, um, so first thing, let's. Um, Yes, I do. Okay. And I've got the uh, Garrett's. I need his as well. So if you see him, remind him. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, so anyway, um, <coughs> let's do let's do graphing calculators first. Okay. And actually what I'm gonna do. Uh, what? So graphing calculators can do anything that we've worked on, okay? Uh, it just does it, you know, we've just got to know how to get into it and do what, what we want it to do, okay? So, you got to turn it on, uh, batteries need replaced, I really don't care. Uh, I'm going to use these batteries till um, till they die. If you're, you know, just a little little factoid about this. Um, the other day I, I changed somebody's screen darkness uh, for somebody. Let me remind you of how to do that, and I want to show you a little bit of a little bit of a uh, interesting point here. If you go second up, second up, second up, second up, second up, second up, it makes it darker. Second down, second down, second down, second down. That makes it lighter. Okay. I don't know if I've ever covered that with you guys, but um, so if you really want to confuse somebody sometime, just grab their graphing calculator, turn the screen all the way down, and then shut it off, and then they'll think their calculator's broken. <laughs> but don't do that to any of mine, or I'll hurt you. Okay. <clears throat> um, and also, as you go second up, second down, you'll notice there's a number in the upper right-hand corner. That number is going to range anywhere from one to nine. Okay. That kind of gives you some idea of how much, you know, it, it's, it's darkness shade. So if you've got to go up to 7, 8, or 9 to actually see it, that means your batteries are almost shot. Like three yes. Okay. So theoretically, there's 27 different shade darknesses. Okay. Okay. So, so here's what I want to do. Let's, let's go step one. Let's find out where the matrix deal is. Matrix is right. It, um, this one, hold on, right here. Uh, matrix on this one is here, okay? Or you, on some of them you might have to go second matrix, um, but you can find it over to the side, second matrix, and then it'll give you this option right here, okay? This is where you put your data in for matrices, okay? Um, and then, um, and then, so there's three things we're going to do. Um, this names column. That's where you pluck those matrices out of and put them back on your calculation screen. Okay? So if I want to take matrix A and put it back on my main screen, I just hit enter, and then it takes it, puts it back on my main screen. There I can do calculations with it. There I can add matrices, multiply matrices, whatever. Okay? So that just copied it out of the matrix menu and placed it on my desktop, if you will, to do various calculations. Okay, um, so like this one right here, if we wanted to find the determinant of this matrix, we could. So now we're on our calculation desktop screen. Now let's hit matrix again. And from there we can do the ma some math with these matrices, or we can edit the matrices. If we curl over, we could go um, math, and we can go, ooh, the determinant. Okay, go enter. And now we can do several different things, but what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm probably now going to have to hit matrix and go back to that and pluck matrix A out of that. 
So if I go matrix A, hit enter, and then, so now it's asking us, do we want to find the determinant of matrix A? Go, yep, hit enter, and it'll give us the determinant is 2. Now, granted, it's kind of silly to do that with a 2 by 2 because we could just, it's 2. But if we had like a uh, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, 6 by 6, it would find the determinants instantly. It's amazing. It really is. Okay? So that's how you would find a determinant. You could also multiply matrices and this, that, and the other. Okay? Um, let's do this today. Um, I'm going to write up over here. Um, let's go. Let's see. Come on. Give me my autofocus. Boom. <laughs> that's going to work or not. Let's give ourselves a couple matrices, a couple systems we want to solve. Let's go 3x plus 4y equals 10. Um, no idea. Oh, hold on. Focus. Boom. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. You know what? Let, let, let's, let's make this a 3x3 three three to start off with. Plus 7z equals 30. Uh, let's go x plus 5z equals 29. Let's go negative 29. What the heck? And I'm going to refer back to this over and over again. And let's go um, 5x minus 2y plus z equals uh, 12. So our goal is to show you how to solve this with a, with a graphing calculator. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and, for right now, we're going to think about this written in as a um, as a matrix equation, and then we're going to go ahead and type in the matrices we need into our graphing calculator. Okay, everything backwards here. So if I write this as a matrix equation, I go three, four, seven. Um, 1, 0, 5. I'm looking up there when I could be looking right here. You ever go to like a football game, like a Husker game, and you find yourself watching on the big screen when you could be just watching the players? Yeah, that's the stuff I'm doing right now. Okay, equals 30, negative 29, and 12. Okay, so we've got this situation where this is matrix A and this is matrix B. And then we, we should know very well that we're just going to go ahead and take the inverse of A times B, and that'll give you my solution like this. I just want you to be able to do that with a graphic graphic. And then I'm going to show you a couple other ways to do it. Okay. So now, let's go ahead and zoom back in here. Come on, auto focus. Okay, am I recording? Yes, I'm still recording. All right. So, math, matrix. Let's go matrix A. We're going to come over. We're going to edit it. And then we're going to go a 3 by 3. So 3, enter, 3, enter. And now we're going to put in our numbers. So we get 3, 4, 7, 1, 0, 5. Okay. 5, negative 2, 1. matrix and you slide over to edit. Yes. And make sure you're editing the proper matrix. That's probably going to be one of the biggest mistakes people make today is they're going to be not putting in matrix A. You've got to select the matrix you want to do. Yeah, well, once you hit enter, it'll give you that option. Okay. And the reason why I want to show you guys this on a graphing calculator is because graphing calculator is definitely a tool you might have in college with you at all times. Then you can solve the system very quickly. Um, or you can use GeoGebra, or you can use Wolfram, or you can use whatever um, whatever uh, program they're working with. Okay, got it? So now what do we need to do? Not yet. One other thing we got to put in first. Yeah, let's put in B matrix. So let's go matrix. Now when we come down to edit, 
you've got to come down to matrix B. Don't hit edit now because then you're just going to change matrix A that you just put in. So now let's come down, hit enter, and now I want A, what dimension? 3 by 1. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that in. 30, negative 29, 12. <clears throat> so in this thing's memory it has matrix A, it has matrix B. So now we just got to go back to the calculation screen. So we're going to go quit, um, second quit, which is top row. Okay, And I don't care if there's other stuff on my screen, that's just what I just typed in before. It doesn't impact what I'm doing next. Okay, <clears throat> So are you guys at my home screen? Okay, I'll let I'll give you guys a couple seconds to catch up. I probably should have put you guys in pairs, but if you feel that would help you, you definitely can slide over. Okay, where are you stuck? Okay, so we get three by three. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's what's happening with you. You you're going over to edit, but you got to go down to B and edit that one. You keep trying to re-edit A. You've got to come down to B. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, Evie, you there? Okay, you're just playing around? Okay, i just making sure that everybody's caught up with me. Okay. So now what are we going to type in? What do we need to calculate? Put it that way. Inverse of A and then take it times. B. That's all we got to type in. So let's go matrix A. So we're going to go matrix A. And I remember if I had just hit enter right now to pull it back to my main screen. So inverse at this point. Inverse is actually going to be this button right here. It says x to the negative 1. We're used to that flipping fractions, but actually that means the multiplicative inverse of whatever we're doing. Well, in terms of a matrix, it's going to find the multiplicative inverse. Okay, So if we hit that button, it'll just go inverse. That right there is the inverse of A. Now let's go times. What do we need to multiply by? B. So we're going to go second matrix, but now i got to come down. Now hit enter. Okay. So one thing I want you to do is I want you to pay close attention to how fast this does this. Because think about how long it would take you to solve a 3x3. Three three. First of all, you don't even know how to do the inverse of a 3x3. Three three. If you did a 3x3 three three with, with Kramer's rule, honestly, how long do you think a 3x3 three three with Kramer's rule would take you? How many minutes? Yeah. 5 to 10? Yeah. Something like that? Okay. 3, 2, 1, boom. It's done. I mean, it's instantaneous, okay? Because again, they are these things are rock stars at um, doing things with just a ton of calculations very, very, very quickly, okay? And the computer's even going to be faster. I will not take the time right now, but I've even typed in like a 7 by 7, and it solves it that quick. Seven variables, seven equations, it finds it, boom, instantaneously. Okay? So, that is um, um, inverse what? Oops, okay, what do we got? Okay, hold up, hold up, go back to matrix. Yeah, you have a two by two. Okay, so what you have is you've got your information for the three by three in matrix C. So you would have to go inverse of C inverse times B. So wherever you put it, that's what you need to pull back. Because, and next time there's no reason not to put it in A, you can just change that very nicely. Just hit enter, that'll pull, okay, now that was in our edit menus. 
so let's go second quit. Okay, so now go, um, just go in here. Okay. Now go matrix C. Inverse times matrix B. There we go. And technically, you don't even have to put this times. This thing is smart enough to know that if you just hit A inverse B, it's going to multiply the two. Piece of cake. Okay? So let's do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you another one just so you guys can practice um, typing this in. Okay, come on. Bless you. So let's go over here, and I'm going to do a 4 by 4 this time, okay? We're going to do, make this very, very quick, okay? x plus 2y plus w equals 12, 3x plus 5z plus 3w equals 0, um, negative 2x minus y plus 3z equals 10. Um, now this is a 4 by 4 though, so we're going to make sure everything's in the right spot. I need one more equation. Um, so let's go 16x plus 5.6y minus 13.8z plus 65.1w equals 1314.8. Now, think about what you were doing that, it would take forever if you're doing that Kramer's rule or inverse matrices. So, let's go ahead and I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and put that in. Um, I would put them in alphabetical. Oh, oh actually, I would, um, it's totally up to you, but it doesn't really matter. I would just go X, Y, Z, W. That's how I would do it. Since that's kind of how, what I had in mind is I'd write it. X, Y, Z, W. Don't forget to put zeros in your places, in your holding. <coughs> Communicate with your neighbors and your so you have to go matrix edit A. So change your matrix A and change to a four by four. <coughs> I'm probably not going to take the time to type this in on mine. <coughs> you do anything, before you before you go back to your main screen and stuff, let me show you something. You guys will think this is like the cat, the kitty cat's meow. Okay? If I go like this, oh, shut up, I don't care. Um, now, actually, my last calculation was A inverse times B. If it's the same calculation you want to do, you don't have to type it all in again. Well, actually, just go ahead, because you guys need to practice going A inverse times B anyway. So I'll just shut up. Because all you really got to do is hit enter. You don't do the same thing. <coughs> this is remarkably clear. I'm impressed. Okay, get it? Got the same answers? 
Well, hurry up, Evie. <laughs> Jeez. You holding this up, Evie? No, oh my gosh. I'm tired of waiting for you all the time. We're just joking. You're usually waiting on us. Sure. No. No. Oh, you don't want me to drink your water? No. other out and then I would like to do this on GeoGebra today and I would like to show you yet another way to solve things with the matrix that you guys just can be like oh my goodness stop them oh five years ago probably something like that um, it just you know everybody was in shirts for this that and the other and the kids were just kind of like do we have to do okay, got it? Okay. So, so now, if you have a graphing calculator, you can solve a system instantaneously. Okay? So this is one where if you're on an ACT, now you know how to solve a system, like, wonderfully. Okay? So you could argue that even a graphing calculator that... Uh, so these these calculators are allowed on an ACT, period. The only ones that aren't is that have a, like a computer alpha, a computer aided solving system, um, a CAS, only those are not allowed. Um, to tell you the truth, I've never really worked with them before. I'm not even sure that that's what CAS stands for, to tell you the truth. Um, so I'm just gonna say I don't know. No, <laughs> actually, that's for another time. So let's let's go to GeoGebra. Okay. Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit different um, than what we've used GeoGebra for before. Okay. Okay. Let's get this all set for those that aren't here. Um, I brought back breakfast pizza for everybody. Um, say thank you, Mr. Rectro. Thank you, Mr. You're welcome. I just love you guys so much. Um, um, so, well, let, let's change what we're going to view. I don't need my graphing anymore. Oh, actually, let's go like this. Let's get rid of... Um, I need my algebra. I don't need graphics, but I need a spreadsheet. Okay? So we're going to do both of those. And just from what I did this morning, I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide this over a wee bit, okay? And let's do this same scenario um, that we did. Let's, let's do our first matrix again. And again, it's the same exact thing we did before on the graphing calculator, but now it's GeoGebra, okay? <clears throat> so, while I have you guys, your attention, well, okay, what I'm going to do is we're going to type in this, we're going to type in our data here, and then we're going to go create matrix. And we're going to do another matrix for B. And then we're going to come down to our input screen. We're just going to type in um, matrix raised to the negative 1, which means inverse, times matrix B, and we're done. It'll give us the answer. Okay? So let's do it with this first one. Uh, so I got 3. Um, and it goes down, so 1, 5. So this is different from the other one. 3, 1, 5, 4, 0, negative 2. You what? Okay. I got 7, 5, um, 1. And while I'm here, I'm going to go over a couple, couple cells. And I'm just going to type in my constants, 30, negative 29, <coughs> 12, okay? So it's just like, it's probably a little bit more user friendly in the sense that, um, this is, I'm going to turn down my brightness a little bit. 
it's, it's since you don't have to go back to the edit screen all of a sudden. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and highlight this matrix, right click, and it's going to give you create matrix. And you'll notice that now it says M1, which, ooh, that's different than I did my trial run this morning on my desktop version. So I don't know if this is going to give us grief or not. Okay. Howdy, sir. Excuse my interruption. That's all right. What do we got? Okay, so what do you have to do with the Chromebook then? Uh, tap your pad with both fingers. Okay. A right click, that's what she's taught uh, on that thing. It may not, yours may not be configured for it. So, um, because they're all. So now, um, let me kind of get some more. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, you can have Okay. Um, yeah, on the, on, the, on the IMAX, you can configure it, and I'd have to go in and configure hers. I don't know how hers is configured to right click. Okay. So now if we go in, well, we also need to create a matrix for matrix B. So, boom, create matrix. Okay. So now what we've got is we've got a matrix one and a matrix two. Okay. And so now input, and again, this is going to be a little bit different from what I did this morning in my practice session. So um, I'm just going to type in matrix um, one, and I'm going to go raise to the, oh no, um, negative one. Okay, so uh, you can't really see it very well, but I've got matrix one raised to negative one, which uh, um, that's that's the uh, the the uh, shift six. You can't see that very well. So shift six, the caret. Okay. Now if we go, we got to go over arrow to get back down. Times. Oh yeah, over arrow to come back down. At least on mine, you do because we were still in the in the um, superscript. Yes, the shift six. Yep. Yes. Okay. So so okay. Hold on. This is this doesn't work the same as the desktop. So M one. Let me just play with it for a little bit. Okay, just relax. This is frustrating. On my um, on my desktop geode, but works great. Any ideas what I should type in here? Play around with it, see if you can get it figured out. 
Now I do an underscore. So this is not as user friendly as. Okay, there we go. So that's what we're. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to type in. I'll, I'll zoom in here just a little bit. Okay, I don't really like this. We're going to type in m underscore one raised to the negative one, and I'll I'll write this on the board here in just a little bit. Yikes! I don't like that at all. So, let me type this in right here. Capital M underscore one, and then we're going to have to go right arrow, come back up. Yuck. Not, this is very cumbersome. Raise to the negative one over, and we're going to go times <laughs> matrix underscore two. There we go. <coughs> Yikes. It's much easier on my desktop version. Because on desktop version, you just go matrix one times. I want to work. Got it. That's really disappointing. So maybe there's another way to do that, um, which I did not investigate because I didn't have a problem with my desktop version. Okay? So now. <coughs> This next part, um, I'm not going to do the 4x4 four four because this is basically, the, it's the same thing. And it, you don't have the, the, the hassle with going back and forth screen, so we're not going to go ahead and do that. But what I, what I am going to do is I'm going to come over here and I want to give our focus over here for a little bit, folks. Um, Thank you. Okay. So here's what I this this is like the the awesome super awesome cat's meow. Um, there is something that's called reduced row <laughs> echelon form. I know this is going to be an angle for them. You can see this row. reduced row echelon form, okay? So what this will do is, this is, <coughs> reduced row echelon form looks like this. So if I was gonna do a two by two, it'd be one, zero, zero, one, five, and six, okay? So what that would mean is my x is five, my y is six. So if you have like an invert, you know, the identity matrix there, and then you have two constants at the end, well then that, those are my values of x and y, okay? How would you, how would so, you get something into what's called reduced row echelon form? Well, this is a complex process and it gets kind of really, really funky at times, but let me just show you a quick example. So if I add 3x plus 2y equals, let's go like this, let's just make it very easy, seven, um, um, x plus 5y equals um, 11, okay? This right now, the matrix that we would be working with would be 3, 2, 7, 1, 5, 11. <coughs> I would not expect you to do this. This information right here is college material on the most part, okay? <coughs> Is this in reduced row echelon form? No, it's not, okay? One thing I do like though is I like this one because that one is really what I want up top, right? So I'm just gonna do what's called a row swap. I got one, five, 11, three, two, seven, okay? So are we closer to reduced row echelon form? Okay, so I'm gonna keep working with this matrix to keep getting it closer and closer and closer to 
reduced row echelon form, okay? So now what I'm going to do is let's get rid of this three, okay? So what we have to imagine is we're going to take negative three times that first row, add it to my second row, and replace my second row with that new equation. Okay, so if I take negative three times this first row and add it to my second row, first of all, my first row is going to stay the same. One, five, eleven. So if I take negative three plus three, what do I get? Zero. Zero. Good. If I take negative fifteen plus two, what do I get? Negative thirteen. If I have negative thirty-three um, plus seven, what do I get? Negative twenty-six. Okay. So are we closer to reduced row echelon form? Yeah. Very much closer to reduced row echelon form. What do I got to do to this second row to go ahead and get it, get this to get this second row right? Change my 13 to 1 by dividing by 13, negative 13, right? So then I can go, so this went to here, and this one's going to go 1, 5, 11, 0, 1, 2, right? Okay. <clears throat> so now, if I continue to come down, now what I'm going to do, well, actually, let me ask you this. How do I get the 5 to a 0? Multiply the bottom by negative 5 and add it to my first row, right? So if I multiply this bottom row times a negative 5, negative 5 times 0 plus 1, what do I get? No. 1. Negative 5 times this plus 1? Yeah, gives me 1. Negative 5 times this plus 5? 0. All right. Negative 5 times this gives me 1, right? And then my bottom, I just leave alone. Is that now in a reduced row echelon form? Yeah. Yes. What's my x? My x is 1. What's my y? 2. This thing will convert something into a, from a matrix to reduced row echelon form instantly. Instantly. Okay? So let's go back to our graphing calculator. Okay? <coughs> Reduced row echelon form is the ultimate way to solve systems, in my opinion. Okay? Let's go ahead and. I know my batteries are low. <coughs> so, you should. We're going to need to put a different matrix in here, aren't we? How many matrices will we need to put in? One. Before we had to put in a matrix A and a matrix B, now we just got to put in a matrix A. So let's go second matrix. Let's come over here and let's do an edit. And let's do our old three by three that we've been using. But now it's got to be a three by three by four. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to type in. Um, kind of our A and B matrix combined, okay? So we're going to smoosh that all into one. So we're going to go three, four, seven, and oh, this is nice, at least on mine. Three, four, seven, I just type in a 30, okay? Since I didn't do that four by four, negative 29, and 12, and then I'm just going to go second quit when I'm all done. <coughs> and this is, oh, that's a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So, just a very straightforward type of a three by four. Long time since I've done a reduced row echelon form. Well, yes, we will. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for people to get caught up, with, but that's all right. Okay, so now let's go. Now we're in our calculation screen. We're on our desktop. Okay, we're gonna go matrix math, and which one do you think we want? This is determinant, transpose, dimensions, fill, 
identity, random matrix, augmented matrix, matrix stored as a list, list stored as a matrix, cumulative sum. Ooh, maybe that's the deal we were looking for before. It's the one below, reduced row echelon form. The first one is row echelon form, which row echelon form is just a little tweak technically. This right here. Okay, where am I at? That's, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. This one right here technically is what's called row echelon form. Because right there we can see our X is 2, and we can back substitute to find our all right, we can see y is 2. We could back substitute to find our x. Okay. Okay, so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do reduced row echelon form. So let's hit enter. That drags that command back to my desktop. And now we just need to go back, second matrix, grab matrix A, hit enter. Because we want to find the reduced row echelon form of matrix A. Enter. Boom. We're done. So that is the quickest way to solve a system with technology. Reduced row echelon form. Okay? <clears throat> and GeoGebra does the same thing, but now I'm scared scared of it. Uh, actually, we, we, sh we, should, we should be able to just type in uh, reduced row echelon form or something like that and get it figured out. So, got it? Okay. I'm going to ask you to do something like this, maybe on the next quiz or something, so make sure that you work on this, okay? So let's go back to here. Okay. So now let's just modify my matrix. I'm just going to take my 30, negative 29, 12, oh, and... Okay. I don't know why that did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what I did a copy and paste with that Catherine. Um, now I'm just going to take this, right click, create matrix, and then down here, okay. So if I just start to type in reduced row echelon form, it gives me that option. Okay. Um, so I'm going to click on that. And now notice right above it, that's now defined as my matrix 2 for whatever reason. So you didn't get rid of the other one. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I just thought it'd be matrix three or matrix four or whatever. Um, so let's just type in capital M and underscore. In my case, two, yours would be different. And just hit enter. And then there's my reduced row echelon form. And that's by far the slickest way to solve a system, okay? So you can do that on a graphing calculator. You can do that on, on this. E even, even if you don't have GeoGebra on whatever computer you're doing, if you just type into Google Reduce Rush on Form uh, or Matrix Calculator, it would, it, it, you could find something instantly. Okay? So now we're to the point where I really would like to give you a couple problems that you could do with GeoGebra and solve systems. So... Um, hopefully I can get this done by the time class is done. If not, you're going to wait just a little bit. Um, let's come to um, oh. <laughs> um, Let's go page 208. Let's zoom out on this just a little bit. 208, let's do 28, 29, and 30, all using GeoGebra. It's upside down because I, should, I, I, could probably, I could probably fix this now. Now 
everything's back to normal. <laughs> okay, now I can stop recording. So yeah, let's just do 208, 20, or 28 through 30 using, you know,